Hey there, Rebus Forever here. Should be getting a few things done in quick succession. Welcome to a new series that represents 2020's cutting edge and guilt removal. As I clear my backlog of games offered to me in 2019 that I didn't quite get as much time with as I would have liked, or else didn't fully click with. So while half the planet burns, global pandemics abound, Zero Sum Future takes place in a sadly realistic dystopian future, dominated by corporate chicanery, waves of colonists being lured into space on the promise of a better life, when upon arrival they will be put to work in your burger mines, or tasked with misleading the next wave of colonists to serve as a mere digit in your pool of available workers. A zero-sum game is a game in which no gain can be made without another's loss, like poker or another game in which the potential winnings are made up from the various players' contributions. This works for Zero Future insofar as the players have access to the same resources and planets as one another. It works less well in that as new colonists expanding to a new region of space devoid of pre-existing life, everything we harvest is effectively a huge net gain. Perhaps the name makes more sense than I think it does, but pedantry aside, what we are to have in this game is a fairly fast-paced competitive town slash colony builder. Sort of. The challenge in ZSF is provided by the need to maintain a general upbeat and agreeable attitude among your colonists. Doing so will motivate your workers to stay in your colony, and also to present coming to your colony as a top idea to any potential new colonists, all the while keeping profit rolling in and denying key resources to your opponents, which in this case consists of up to free AI or potentially free human beings if you know anyone that owns the game. I requested or accepted a key for Zero Sum on the basis of enjoying economic games, even fairly abstract ones. After playing through the bulk of the tutorials and also learning to hold my own against the most basic AI, I think I can see the potential for this game to be enjoyable between a group of friends, especially with the various illegal buildings that can drastically skew a game in your favour. I have yet to take to the game personally though. I like a slower pace for my building or city games. I feel especially against the AI that you have to do everything in such a rush in this game that there isn't really enough time to enjoy doing anything. For instance, the main method of tackling your opponent's use of banned buildings is a system whereby you can scan your enemy's buildings and dob them in. I have found in my time playing the game the general fast pace has limited my focus to spamming production buildings in a vain hope to fulfil the needs of my colonists, and as such I really have time to interact with the hunting down illegal buildings placed by the AI. There is a chance the game comes into its own when played against humans. The problem is with games like Command and & Conquer and various other strategy games. Playing against the AI is what motivates you to play against human beings, assuming playing against the AI is fun. Perhaps being limited to conducting my trade wars against the AI, I might have missed the opportunity to see the game in its best light. I also found the game to be a little bit devoid of feedback as to what is happening on a macro level, outside of your business further alienating me from the motivation to interact with my enemy's buildings. My experiences of victory in this game have all involved me ignoring the AI players and just tending to the needs of my people. In the games where I have attempted to find illegal buildings, I will inevitably not be paying attention to my colony. If the pace were slower, perhaps the espionage component would seem like a more useful option. Either way, the lack of time to make use of the game's features in the rounds I've played makes me question the balance. When playing against easy AI, What's the point in espionage if the AI will suicide itself fiscally before they become necessary? But then, if the AI were better, the lack of a save feature would limit your opportunity to replay a game that could have been an opportunity to work out what went wrong. Why is there no save feature? I mean, even if you were playing an online game with some people, it would still be nice to save. But then again, even for the computer skirmishes, it would be handy. And I think save games have become like a fairly established feature at this point in time. I would be curious to see a late game Every game I've played seems to last about 10 minutes, after which it seems as though either the computer or myself invest heavily in Betamax and collapse. Maybe there is more to the game and I will be forced to come back and amend my opinion, but for now this game comes across as a nice idea, with a number of conflicts inherent to its current design, made more glaring by my time against the AI. With human players balancing their economies and actually requiring the late game illegal buildings, perhaps the various sneaky aspects would possess more utility. From my experience though, Given I got the game key for free, Zero Sum Future has been very much a zero sum experience. I'd honestly be interested if folks have had more fun with the game in multi, or otherwise, if you played a few 4v4s, how'd you find the game? Anywho, I will be doing a few of these quicker videos to clear my conscience. Thanks to you all for watching and the devs for providing me with a key, my patrons for helping me separate myself from Adobe's 12 month contract, and anyone else who hops on board. Excuse the slow start to the year, but I have been pretty busy. Anywho, until next time, toodle pip.